Get ready for more lockdowns, folks, in the United Kingdom or around the world. We've been warning you, of course, that lockdowns are about to happen, could happen again. And this time they've been warning us that it could be even worse than before. And the biggest concern, of course, that it would be children. That this time, this new virus, whatever they're going to release, whatever's coming out now, part two will be more deadly and it will specifically go after children. So lockdowns, we didn't do them quite as stringently as we could have before, but now we will do them better this time. That's what they want. All right, well, we're being warned to be on the lookout for a new virus called CCHF. It's the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. I'm gonna call it CCHF if that's all the same to you. Now, we're being told that some cases have already been reported in Spain and most likely it's going to move west. Uh, the last case in Spain, was in 2016. More recent deaths have happened in Pakistan. So let's go through this because when they say like, oh my gosh, it's already in Spain, it has been, like I said, for seven years now. Um, so what is this? Is it serious and is it real? Let's go through it. In 2011, the Journal of Infectious Diseases published this paper from Indian researchers uh, when cases of CCHF started to cause an outbreak in Gujarat, a Western state in India. Now. Here is the history of this virus and why it's named after Crimea and Congo, two places that are very far apart, if you know your geography. Um, that's because it was first discovered uh, among Soviet Union personnel from the military in Crimea during the World War II. So it was named Crimean hemor hemorrhagic fever, but then it was shown to be similar to this Congo virus that caused febrile illnesses in Belgian Congo. So the linking of the two names. So that's why we're calling it that. So um, it, inevitably, you know, when these names, when these viruses have names of places, uh, now we all have to be sensitive to whether or not that's racist or whether or not that means anything. Well, locational places aside, let's, you know, this doesn't sound like a fun thing to actually get. Uh, it's transmitted through ticks, but it can pass through livestock to humans too. This also is from that research paper. paper. So see these ticks can bite like the bunnies and the livestock or the cows and then pass that on. Uh, this is another thing where you're like, oh, okay, are they going to, you know, warn us about meat now the next pandemic is that going to be a thing you know i'm just looking at this and like reading between the lines this is me extrapolating we don't know yet but now we've been conditioned to ask questions like this so okay um and infected people can infect one another too uh it says here that even though it's a tick disease secondary cases are frequently seen due to human to human transmission via percutaneous or uh, mucosal exposure to blood and bodily fluids. Uh, this uncommon transmission takes place most often among healthcare workers in hospital settings. Well, how serious is it? Well, this one has a much higher fatal rate than COVID. So, you know, when they say like, oh, we didn't get their attention enough last time, does this number get your attention? 40 to 60% fatal in some cases. In, uh, disease is fatal in 40 to 60% of cases. Uh, severe cases, death occurs as a result of multi-organ failure, uh, intervascular coagulation, and circulatory shock. So, yeah, it's bad. It says patients may also have a feeble pulse, uh, tachycardia, loss of hearing, loss of memory. Also, it can cause headaches and vomiting and upset stomach. Now, this is there is actually a known vaccine that was discovered as far back as 2010. It comes from mouse brains. Would you like that? A mouse brain vaccine? Hmm. It's um, an inactivated suckling mouse brain derived vaccine has been used in Bulgaria for protection against CCHF. But there is also a patent for an antibody treatment in the United States that has been pending since 2011. Take a look at this. Uh, all of these pharmaceutical companies have an anti-Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus antibody uh, that they have with the U.S. Patent Office just sitting there waiting for final approval um, by these biological, bi biopharmaceutical institutions. Um, interestingly enough, MAP Pharmaceuticals, which is lift, listed there, is also working on Marburg virus. Remember, we talked about Marburg virus back in March and how the World Health Organization was warning us that this also could be the next pandemic. Uh, but already the media is picking up on this uh, CCHF 
as a climate change issue. Nobody has proven that. They just feel comfortable running headlines like this, climate change helping this new virus, deadly virus spread. They're saying it's warmer waters and warmer weathers that lead to drier summers that's causing ticks to move through Europe. Only again, the cases in Spain were detected in 2011 and 2016. So how does current climate affect the ticks? Well, we don't know. I mean, Spain is in the Iberian Peninsula where we live and we had record rainfall this year. So who knows if that actually changes things. Um, but, you know, if you, again, look at this, they're saying, you know, this is not hypothetical. Something already happened. Um, you know, Spain detected these cases in 2016 and 2011. But this climate change narrative that's not been proven anywhere, it's, it is in fact hypothetical. Like this, this says, you know, it's, it's not hypothetical. It literally is like, <laughs> it's not proven. It is a hypothesis, but okay. Uh, but the World Health Organization has already warned us that they need global powers to address climate change. Remember, we've been talking about this a lot. The World Health Organization has the pandemic treaty. They want powers that supersede every world government so that they can make decisions in order to prevent pandemics, right? Or control pandemics. Well, here is from that treaty that we warned you about just a few months ago. Uh, they said that they are going to address these drivers of emergence and re-emergence emergence of disease at the animal, human, animal, environmental interface, including but not limited to climate change, land use change, wildlife trade, desertification, and antimicrobial resistance. So they've already said, hey, we need control of how you use land. We need control of everything because climate change can lead to pandemics, which gives us the power over everything, right? So we're already trained to listen for that kind of thing. And again, they're claiming that anything and any and everything and anything is regarding land use, which like, I can't fly, can you? Like that's everything basically. Uh, you know, they need to be in charge of it, redistribute it, make decisions about it because of possible pandemics. Uh, so, again, no one has proven that CCHF is actually migrating because of climate change. Um, even though the media tells us this is hypothetical, it is literally the definition of a hy hypothesis. But OK, uh, so we'll watch this one. Um, but, but these it, professors are saying, like, yeah, it's coming. Like, and that's why Britain is on lockdown alert. You know, well, the, it's going to 40% of victims are going to die as a result of this. The it's scientist coming. who l testified last week to Parliament said, I don't know if lockdowns are the way to prevent this one, but it's coming here. And, it's, and, and he said, it is coming. He said, it's not a matter of when or if. Uh, it's not a matter of if. He said, it's when. It's coming, though. And that's what he says. And Jim Ferguson at... Um, a GB News posted this. He said, uh, uh, breaking news, a pandemic of the vaccinated. He said a top virologist has made a video claiming to be his last and that he believes potentially there would be mass death and outbreaks of illness towards the end of this summer. It comes on the heels of reports, he says, that another pandemic may be heading to the UK, which could cause another mass lockdown event. And it could be the big one, killing 40 percent of its victims. And they're saying that this would be cover for those who have already been vaccinated and becoming ill due to injuries caused by well, their immune systems. Well, I watched that video. What he literally says is that people who have been vaccinated have certain immunocompromises now and that he thinks they are a group that may be, well, actually what he says is that groups who may not be susceptible to this are the unvaccinated. That's wow. literally what he says. He doesn't say that the vaccinated are, are susceptible. He's saying the unvaccinated are not. That's what he said. Not uh, susceptible. It's a double negative. Yeah. But you can put this not together. Susceptible. Right. So if you speak a romance language, a double negative is a negative. But <laughs> if you speak common, English, right. a double negative is a positive. And so you can, I'm sorry yeah. for that grammar. Anyway, um, it, the point is that, you know, the expert who testified in the UK Parliament is saying we don't think we need um, anything like lockdowns yet, but we need to watch this because it's coming west because of climate change, which is not. He didn't say that. The media is saying that. So they're putting all kinds of like BS on top of the idea 
that there was a virus in Spain in 2016. Um, you know, outbreaks of this are not uncommon in Eastern countries. That doesn't mean we shouldn't care about them. Absolutely, we should. Someone's been working on this mouse brain vaccine for 13 years now. So like, yes, we should care about that, right? But we shouldn't like swallow this BS about climate change or anything like that. Anyway, let us know what you think of this in the chat. Uh, this information and all these links to original sources will be in tomorrow's newsletter. And uh, if you think I've misinterpreted something or you'd like to add something to it, I'd love uh, to see what your comments are. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.